This is the McDonnell Douglas Astronautics Company's Systems Center, a huge research and development complex spread over 250 acres here at Huntington Beach, California. Most of the work done here is associated with the American space program, but for several years now, a small group of scientists here has been investigating a strange new space-age metal, a nickel-titanium alloy called nitinol. And a couple of years ago, the Department of Energy invited the people at McDonnell Douglas to investigate the potential for nitinol heat engines and nitinol power plants. This is what they came up with, the world's largest operating prototype nitinol heat engine. It is running on warm water, and the scientists here at McDonnell Douglas say it may have an overwhelming cost advantage over oil, gas, or nuclear-generated power. Even more amazing, no one knows exactly why this machine is working because no one knows exactly why nitinol behaves the way it does. In cold water, nitinol turns soft, bend it and it stays bent, but in hot water it springs back with forces as high as 55 tons a square inch. No one knows quite why this happens. Several years ago, McDonnell Douglas began experimenting with nitinol in the form of springs. At room temperature, the nitinol wire springs bend easily, but in warm water they spring back, thus forcing the wheel around. Even stranger, nitinol wires get stronger the more they're used. They develop a double memory. They not only contract in the warm water, but they begin to stretch of their own accord in the cool water. Nitinol can be trained. McDonnell Douglas then went on to the next stage using a nitinol spring belt running around pulleys, cycling between cold water and warm water. The tension on the belt drove the pulleys around. The Department of Energy then asked McDonnell Douglas to see if this device could be upscaled. A team of scientists at McDonnell Douglas's engineering and technology department, led by Dr. Janell, spent two years on the project, and this is the result. This engine has just been unveiled. Hardly anyone expected it would work so well. It seems to have profound implications. I asked some of the scientists at McDonnell Douglas how long it will be before nitinol heat engines will be making a substantial contribution to world energy supplies. Um, that's a very tough question to answer. And one of the reasons is because the economics haven't been completely studied. We still know, need to know the price of materials and the price of a developed heat engine. Right now, it looks very, very advantageous to us. That is, we think we can convert energy cheaper than by other means, low-grade thermal energy currently being thrown away. Uh, the nitinol engine is a fairly simple, mechanically simple device. Uh, we believe that one can couple small modules of an engine to produce engines that would generate larger amounts of power. And uh, in principle, one could stack these things as, uh, as thick as possible and come up with an engine that might generate uh, five megawatts or so. I think my favorite uh, application uh, in a small engine would be uh, for irrigation. And the thing that's interesting there is that you can use the engine, uh, the power source for the engine is merely the difference in temperature between the water that's going to be pumped and the air temperature. So almost magically uh, you have a uh, device that will be able to lift water from, uh, you know, one level to another. The McDonnell Douglas scientists say that nitinol heat engines could run on solar heated water or on the temperature differences between the upper and lower levels of the oceans and lakes and dams. It could also run on waste heat, which at present accounts for the loss of nearly two-thirds of all energy produced in industrial nations. Research is now underway into nitinol heat engines in the United States, Europe, Japan and China, devising ways to harness the unique characteristics of the most remarkable metal we have known. Kevin Sanders, Cable News Network, Science Report.